Welcome to my video classes. Today's topic is refraction of light. In a homogeneous medium, the light ray travels in a straight line. Homogeneous medium means in which the property properties remain same or we can say the refractive index of the medium remains same. We will discuss what is refractive index in our coming slides. Okay, at present, just uh, we see that the light ray travels in a straight line path in a homogeneous medium. Now, what happens when a light ray travels from one medium to another medium? Here both the mediums are transparent medium. So observe here. So here in medium one it is traveling straight. In medium two it is traveling straight. But when we see from the beginning the light ray which is in the medium one it is supposed to travel like this. It is supposed to travel like this. But here at this point of incidence, this is the point of incidence, this is uh, the boundary at the boundary between medium 1 and medium 2. So when it is entering into the new medium, suddenly it is bending. So this bending of light ray at the point of incidence when it is entering into the medium 2, this is called the refraction of light. The light ray which is falling on the boundary or you say the surface between the two media is called the incident light ray and the light ray which is enter into the new medium that is called the refracted light ray. So this whole phenomena okay this and this okay this bending of light ray when it travels from one medium to another medium is called the refraction of light. So just Remember, the bending of light is called the refraction of light. Okay. Now, look at here. Observe the effects caused by the refraction of light. So, refraction takes place when there is two media. Okay. So, here we see that the ruler is looking good. It's looking straight. Now, observe what happens here when a glass slab is kept on the ruler now the ruler is appearing something like this it's broken or it is bent to other side actually nothing is happened here nothing is happened to the ruler just for our eyes it is just appearing like that this is not the real okay this is everything because of the refraction of light so we have so many phenomena okay for example if we take a glass of water okay and if we place a pencil inside it or straw anything now if we add some water it looks like it is bent or something it's broken like that but actually it won't okay it just appear okay Let's discuss about the rarer medium and denser medium. So here it's very clear we have two media here. The medium one is air, whereas the medium two is water. Two media we have taken. The speed of the light in the air is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second, whereas the speed of the light in the water is around 2.25 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. Now, the medium in which the speed is more, such medium is called rarer. So, in this case, it's very clear that the speed of light is more in the air. So, air is called the rarer medium. Okay, just remember, rarer medium means the speed is more. So, so here the air becomes the rarer medium, the other one 
obviously it becomes the denser medium so water is denser when the air and water is taken air is rarer now let's take one more example so this rarer medium and denser medium comes only when we are comparing two media okay now let's take another example now here we have medium one as water whereas the medium two is glass just now we have seen the speed of the light in the water is 2.25 into 10 power of 8 meter per second whereas the speed of the glass around it is around approximately 2 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second so in this case we are comparing the water and glass these two media so here in this case the speed is more in the water so the water becomes the rarer here whereas the glass become the denser so like this we come to know the rarer and denser mediums only when we are comparing okay so we cannot say which medium okay uh, so we have seen in the previous example so air and water we have taken air and water we have we got air as the rarer medium now we have taken water and glass this time the water is rarer so like this so okay whatever it may be so this air is always rarer this point we have to remember air or vacuum we always consider it as the rarer medium okay now now let's take an example so here a rarer medium is given which is taken as air the denser medium which is the water so this is the line this is the boundary okay now observe here what happened the light is falling on the boundary now it is the bending has taken place so what happened here just bending taken place bending has taken place bending of light ray has taken place the better word is instead of bending you we can use the word refraction of light ray has taken place refraction of light okay nice now in order to understand more about the refraction of light okay we need a normal at the point of incidence so normal this is just a line this is not any light ray so this is the normal line that is the perpendicular line to this boundary okay which is very important in this topic now we are going to define the angles always the angles are defined with respect to the normal line okay the angle which is between the normal and the incident light ray this angle is called the angle of incidence and we represent with letter theta i whereas the angle between the normal line and the refracted light that is called angle of refraction and we represent with letter theta r so so here in this case it is very clear that the light is traveling from the rarer medium to the denser medium okay so refraction has taken place now it's supposed to travel like this straight but the light ray when it is entering into the new medium that is the water here it is bending towards the normal so this point we have to remember here whenever the light ray travels from rarer medium to the denser medium the light ray bends towards the normal or we can also use close to the normal close to the normal so it's supposed to travel straight like this but actually here it is the light ray is here it is so it means it is a bit close to the normal now so one more now observe the angles also so angles are very clear the angle of incidence in this case okay 
this will be more when compared to this that is theta i is more than that of theta r okay now another example now here this is the denser medium and this is the rarer medium and this is the boundary between the two mediums okay observe here what is happening so light is falling on the boundary and entering into the new medium but it is bending to that side okay so here this is also a refraction of light that is the bending of light rays taking place that's nice to understand more we need the favorite line that is the normal line now look at the angle of incidence and angle of refraction okay so the angle of incidence that is theta i angle of refraction that is theta r so here the theta r is more because the light ray is supposed to travel straight like this but when it is entering into the rarer medium okay so it is moving that side so it means so compared to the, so we can say that it is more away away from the normal so here when a light ray travels from denser medium to the rarer medium it bends away from the normal so in this case it's very clear theta i that is the angle of incidence is smaller than that of the angle of refraction now one more example so look at picture here what is happening here the, this is the incident light ray okay this is the point of incidence now it is going like this way so the bending is taking place what is happening here the bending of light ray is taking place when it is traveling from one medium to another medium so this bending is called refraction of light that's nice that's nice now we are going to discuss about the loss we have two loss in the refraction of light the first loss says that the incident light ray and the normal line and the refracted light ray these three lie in the same plane at the point of incidence now whereas the second loss says the ratio of sin of trigonometric ratios sin theta cos theta like that so sin of angle of incidence to the sin of angle of refraction if you are taking this ratio sin theta i by sin theta r this ratio okay remains constant is always constant whatever be the value of theta i whatever be the value of theta r if you are taking this ratio this is always constant and this constant is generally known as refractive index let's discuss more about this refractive index now observe here so what is happening it's very clear the refraction is taking place so refraction means the bending of light ray when it is moving from one medium to another medium remember here i would like to tell one more point say so this is the boundary okay when the light is falling like this way okay so at the point of incidence it is bending either close to the normal or away from the normal so so this is the normal line that's nice now same thing this is the boundary if the light is falling on the boundary separating the medium 1 and medium 2 the light ray will enter into the medium 2 but it will pass without any bending so we don't call it as 
okay no bending it is passing as it is so we don't call it as refraction no refraction so refraction word is used only when there is a bending so in this case we don't call the refraction okay now now let's discuss the second law of refraction so this is also called the snell's law so we have learned that sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is always constant and we call it as the refractive index and we represent the refractive index with letter small n now so here this is medium 1 this is medium 2 when the light is traveling from medium 1 to the medium 2 the ratio actually gives us the refractive index of the medium 2 with respect to medium 1 what we actually get if we are taking this sin i by sin r we get the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 so this with respect to medium 1 this word so in symbolically we represent either we keep it here or we keep it here or we keep it here or we keep it here so in many books uh, different notations are given so we can use any one of them so here it shows that the refractive index of the medium 2 with respect to medium 1 so this is also same thing refractive index of the medium 2 with respect to medium 1 refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 okay let's discuss more about the refractive index okay and one more thing this refractive index okay this has no units it is just a constant okay it tells us when the light ray is traveling from one medium to the another medium how much bending it takes place or it tells us what happens to the speed of light when it is traveling from one medium to the another medium okay one more we are discussing more about the refractive index so here the medium one is the air the medium two is water if we are calculating the ratio of sin theta i by sin theta r which is the constant we are getting so here in this case we get the refractive index of the water with respect air okay so whenever the first medium is the air this with respect to generally we don't write this with respect to air or with respect to vacuum we simply say refractive index of the water more clearly it is the absolute refractive index of the water whenever we are using this absolute word it means that we are comparing with the air or we are comparing with the vacuum okay generally we say that refractive index of water so it's understood that we are comparing with the air with respect to air it means it is absolute refractive index okay now one more example okay let's calculate some numbers are given here suppose the angle of incidence is 50 degree angle of refraction is 35 degree let's calculate sin 50 by sin 35 so we have to keep our calculators in the degree mode and let's calculate so we got 1.33 what is this 1.33 it's a constant so this constant we are calling it as the refractive index refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 or we can the best one is this is the 1.33 is the refractive index of the water with respect to air or we can say simply the absolute refractive index of the water okay 1.33 next one more example this time the air and water the light is traveling from medium 1 that is the air into the the glass okay now let's take sin theta i by divided by sin theta r so what we get we get the refractive index of 
Hmm. What we get if we are calculating sin theta i by sin theta r in this case, what we get? We get the refractive index of hmm, whatever is there in the second video. So refractive index of the glass with respect to now we have to use the word medium one so air so if we don't want to use this with respect to air simply better use the word absolute absolute refractive index of glass sometimes we say simply refractive index of glass like this okay now some numbers are given same angle of incidence is 50 degree okay now let's see what happens when the light ray enters into the glass this time the angle of refraction is 31 degree so let's calculate the ratio that is the refractive index of the glass with respect to the air or simply the refractive index of the glass or absolute refractive index of the glass so how much in this case so 1.5 what is this constant number so this is absolute refractive index of the glass clear now one more example here here this time the water and glass okay so refraction is taking place let's calculate sin theta i by sin theta r so what we get sin theta i by sin theta r if we are calculating we get the refractive index of the medium 2 that is the glass with respect to the refractive index of medium 1 that is the water okay so this time this is not with respect to air or with respect to vacuum so we should not use the word absolute we can use the word relative this is called the relative refractive index of the glass otherwise this is the best one the first word is the best one okay let's take the angle of incidence is 50 degree the angle of refraction is 43 degree let's calculate sine 50 divided by sine 45 it is what 1.125 what is this this is the refractive index of the glass with respect to the water now one more now we are going to discuss the same thing the ratio sin uh, sin theta i by sin theta r the same thing now we are going to re uh, rewrite in the useful form okay so in the useful form we simply uh, use like this one and twos instead of theta i we use theta one whereas theta r we use theta two that's it okay now medium one the refractive index the absolute refractive index of medium one is n1 whereas the absolute refractive index of medium two is n2 now like this we want to write n1 theta 1 n2 theta 2 just put sign sign of this angle of incidence sign of this angle of refraction okay so this equation we can write it as this is this ratio gives the refractive index of the medium 2 with respect to medium 1 now we are separating we are writing in terms of in terms of the ref, uh, absolute refractive index so we can write it as okay sin theta 1 divided by sin theta 2 can be written as okay the absolute refractive index of medium 2 with the, divided by the absolute refractive index of medium 1 so if we cross multiply so we get like this so this is the useful form of the Snell's law okay this is very useful and easy also to apply it simply okay what is n1 the absolute refractive index of medium 1 okay multiplied by the sine of angle of incidence okay which is equal to this absolute refractive index of medium 2 multiplied by this sine of angle of refraction like this very easy so let me write n1 sin theta 1 equal to this is everything in one medium which is equal to n2 into sin theta 2 okay we already discussed that the refractive index of a medium is a dimensionless number unitless number 
and that describes how fast the light travels through the medium. So here we are comparing with respect to the vacuum. In the vacuum, the speed is more. Okay. In the vacuum, the light can travel with a speed of 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. And this speed we represent with letter C. Okay. Now, the refractive index of the vacuum equal to 1. Okay. So, if we are, we are here, we are considering everything with respect to vacuum in the vacuum because nothing is there we have taken it its refractive index as one now we are comparing okay when the light is entering into the medium any medium so what so what happens to the speed of the light okay by comparing with the speed we are uh, measuring or giving the index number to the medium okay now the formula is the absolute refractive index of the medium so here we are interested in this medium so in this medium okay we have we have to find the refractive index of this medium okay so that is we are simply represent with letter n so no need to write n2 because the first medium is the vacuum okay very simple just we have to divide the speed of the light in the vacuum divided by the speed of the light in this medium so the formula becomes n equal to c by v we can also use n2 equal to c by v so where v is what v is the speed of the light in this medium okay now we can also represent in another way which is very easy that is look at here this is medium 1 and this is medium 2 this picture shows the refraction of light okay now suppose the medium 1 whose absolute refractive index is n1 and the light is traveling in medium 1 with a velocity of v1 now medium 2 has an absolute refractive index of n2 now the speed of the light in this medium is v2 so we can write the equation like this n1 into v1 is equal to n2 into v2 which is very easy formula now the factors on which the refractive index of a medium depends so mainly two things one the nature of pair of media so what we are taking medium one and medium two so the pair this combination okay this is one another one the wavelength of the light or we can say the color of the light now we are going to discuss the refractive index in terms of the wavelength of the light. So here we are considering light has the wave nature. So it means when the light is falling on the boundary, okay, refraction will take place. Then what happens? There will be a change in the wavelength of the light. Whereas the frequency of the light ray remains constant so whenever the light travels from one medium to another medium the frequency remains constant whereas the wavelength will change so here look at here so we represent the wavelength with letter lambda so here there is a change in the wavelength okay here in medium one say it, if it is a rarer medium the larger wavelength when it is entered into the denser medium the wavelength will be will be decreasing okay so in terms of the wavelengths okay we can write the equation like this if in the medium one if the wavelength is lambda one in medium two if the wavelength is lambda two 
then the equation becomes like this n1 lambda 1 equal to n2 lambda 2 now partial reflection and partial refraction say the light is falling on the boundary separating the media 1 and 2 then some part of the light is reflected and some part of the light is refracted into the medium too. Now, actually in reality this is happening everywhere. Say for example, this is 100% light. Say this is 20% uh, light for example. Now it means remaining 80% is refracted. So at one place both reflection and refraction is taking place. So we can say this phenomena as partial reflection and partial refraction. So this picture shows us, so what is happening here? The light is traveling from one medium to another medium. The bending that is the refraction is taking place. Okay. Now this is a sample problem here. The angle of refraction uh, for air and water surface, air and water surface. Okay. We have to find whereas the angle of incidence is given 30 degree. So this is given as 30 degree. So no information is given except air and water. So air we know the refractive index taps as 1. Whereas for the water, okay, the absolute refractive index of the water, that is the refractive index of the water with respect to air or vacuum, which is equal to 1.33 okay so we have to find this theta 2 so we have our three formulas say n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 this is the one formula we have learned one more formula n1 v1 equal to n2 v2 one more formula n1 lambda 1 equal to n2 lambda so out of these three formulas, so this is related to angles. So this is the best one. Okay. Suitable one. So let's use this formula and find out. Yes, substitute the values. So N1 equal to 1 sine 30, which is equal to 1.333 into sine theta 2. Now sin 30 equal to, we have to keep our calculators in the degree mode, 0 0.5 equal to 1.333 sin theta 2. So 0 0.5 divided by 1.333 which is equal to sin theta 2. Now whose value equal to 0 0.5 divided by 1.333 which is equal to around 0. 375 which is equal to sine 32 okay sorry sine theta 2 so now we have to send this sign to the other side because we have to find only theta 2 so it becomes sine inverse so sine inverse means in our calculator shift 10 so 0 0.375 which is equal to theta 2 so it becomes the answer is 22 degree this is the answer yes one more problem an underwater scuba diver sees the sun at an apparent angle of 45 degree from the vertical what is the actual direction of the sun? Say here is the scuba diver. Okay, he sees that. Okay, for him, the light, for him, the sun appears here somewhere. It appears, only it appears like that. Okay, for him, it appears like that. 
so making an angle of 45 degree with the vertical 45 degree with the vertical now we have to find the actual actually it will be somewhere here because this is air this is water okay now let's calculate so the favorite formula is here this is all related to angles so n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 so we know for the air n1 equal to 1 whereas for the water it is 1.333 so n1 1 into sin we don't know theta 1 equal to because theta so here it's up to us we can take the light ray from here to it's up to us anything we can take no problem 1.333 into sine 45 degree so sine theta 1 equal to 1.333 multiplied by sine 45 so which is equal to the answer is 0 0.9 4257 okay keep the answer the same in the calculators and just put sign inverse of that answer I got the answer theta 1 as 70.4 Eight, 8 degrees so which I can take this as 70.5 degree now yeah these are our favorite formulas the best let's do one more problem so a laser beam is incident at an angle of 30 degree to the vertical on a solution of corn syrup in the water so this is the laser beam it is incident at an angle of 30 degree with the vertical okay on to a solution this is this part is the solution of corn syrup in the water okay so it's a mixture of corn syrup and water so corn syrup solution so whose refractive index we have to find so if the beam is refracted with an angle of 19.24 degree with the vertical then we have to find the refractive index of this uh, syrup solution okay so n2 we have to find so uh, so our favorite three formulas are given here so out of these three our favorite formula now to solve it is n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 this is the best one because theta 1 is given okay n1 we know it and this is theta 2 n2 we have to calculate n1 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 1 into sin 30 1 into sin 30 which is equal to n2 into sin 19.24 sin 30 is 0 0.5 which is equal to n2 into sin 19.24 sin 19.24 whose value equal to 0 0.3295 0 0.3295 so 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.3295 which is equal to n2 okay so I got the answer n2 value as 1.5173 okay which is equal to this is the refractive index of the corn syrup solution so we can also write as 1.52 it's up to us okay now so the first part is over okay n2 value we have got now we have to find the second part the wavelength okay so just now we got instead of 1 1.52 we can take 
7 okay it's up to us now we have to find the wavelength of the light ray okay so suppose the light is red with the vacuum wavelength is 632.8 nanometer find the wavelength in the solution so here it is given in the vacuum or in the air we consider the same lambda 1 equal to 632.8 nanometer okay so in this solution we have to find the lambda 2 that's it so now the out of these three we will be taking uh, this uh, n1 lambda 1 equal to n2 lambda 2 n1 into lambda 1 so here it is so n1 is 1 into 632.8 so we can take uh, we can keep the nanometer as it is because the lambda okay if you are keeping it as it is we get the answer in the same so in this problem no problem so n2 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 is 1.517 into the lambda 2 so which is equal to 632.8 divided by 1.517 which is equal to lambda 2 so 632.8 divided by so I got the answer as 417 so this is the value so which is in the nanometer because the lambda 1 we did not we kept it as it is in the nanometer we get everything in the nanometer okay now so this is the wavelength in the syrup solution now we will jump to the fourth one afterwards we will do the frequency so the speed of the solution okay sorry the speed of the laser beam in the solution so we are going to do this fourth part speed we are going to calculate speed so our, now this is the favorite formula now what happened to me n1 v1 equal to n2 v2 so n1 is given this is air so v1 equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second that's nice so here we have to find v2 okay so everything we have just substitute 1 into 3 into 10 to the power of 8 equal to n2 we got i want to maintain the 517 instead of rounding of 517 into the v2 so 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by 1.517 so this is the value of v2 whose value equal to 1.98 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second so this is the velocity of the laser light in the solution now let's calculate the last part so that is the frequency here we already learned that so whenever the light is traveling from one medium to the another medium the frequency remains the same only the what will change the velocity will change the lambda will change whereas the frequency remains constant okay so whatever it may we have to find the frequency in the solution so from this formula frequency equal to v by lambda okay as we are calculating here in the second medium in the syrup solution we write v2 and lambda 2 v2 just now we got 1.98 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second whereas the lambda wavelength uh, we got 4 1 7 nanometer nano 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 means 10 to the power of minus 9 so we get the answer as 4.74 times 10 to the power of 14 so the units for the frequency are hertz
one more problem so here we have to find the speed of the light in the flint glass first okay then water and then zircon so let's calculate the speed of the light in the flint glass so we can consider like this so light is traveling from the air into the flint glass so in order to do this problem we should know the refractive index of the flint glass otherwise we can't so it is given the refractive index equal to 1.66 so here in this medium we have to calculate so everything we have n1 we have n2 we have the speed we have if it is not given means we consider it okay so that's it so it's very clear the speed of the light in the flint glass we should calculate so we take the flint glass as the second medium and it is already given the splint gas has a refractive index of 1.66 so just we take this the known values okay medium 1 refractive index 1 speed of light in the air equal to 3 into 10 for up 8 that's it use this formula n1 v1 equal to n2 v2 1 into 3 into 10 to the power of 8 equal to n2 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 is 1.66 this is given v2 we have to find 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by 1.66 so this is the speed of the light in the flint glass which we get 1.81 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second this is the value now the same thing now we can calculate for the water so for the water uh, the refractive index is given as 1.33 the same formula okay just we remove this is 1.33 divided by 1.33 so let me calculate so 3 multiplied by 10 power 8 divided by 1.33 so it is 2.25 okay one more this time we have to find the zircon the zircon the refractive index is given as 1.923 so the same formula 1.923 so it becomes 1.923 again 1.923 so I got 1.56 okay this is in the zircon easy that's it we finished the refraction of light I hope you understood so let me write the formulas once again which we have learned in this so n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 n1 v1 equal to n2 v2 n1 lambda 1 equal to n2 lambda 2 and one more formula we have learned that is the speed of the light okay v equal to f lambda thank you